Hello, I'm Robert, and this time I'm going to talk about Bounce Metronome. And this talk, it's for, I'm showing it on the Mac, but what I'm going to say applies just as well to Linux or to Windows. So I'm going to talk about some of the things that I'll, I'll, I'm going to show you around the program and show you some of the things you can find in it. And then I'm also going to show you some things that you might like to do to help get it set up when you first start using it. So let's look at what uh, when you first start using it first. So if we go to Ops and Ops Options General, here you can configure a few things to do to do with the way it's uh, it's set out. So first of all, the notation. So you might want to just check. It says here beat crotchets. So and if I put in say subdivisions, crotchets and quavers. So if you're in the US, you might not even know what those are. That's the UK way of talking about quarter notes and eighth notes. So if, if it's got that wrong or you just want to change it, go to this window and I can change that to US notation, which I will do for this talk, because chances are most of you are more familiar with that. And now it says beat quarter notes and eighth notes, and it will say that throughout Bart's metronome. Right, so another thing you might want to deal with right away is you might find that the text is a little bit small. And this depends on your screen resolution and, and the dots per the DPI resolution of your screen. So if you've got a large screen, small pixels, then you can go here and it might auto detect this, but if not, then go and click on rescale all windows by. And now notice how all the text windows a little bit bigger and the text is rather larger and easier to read. Do you see how the big main window, everything is, is somewhat larger? And if you want to make it even larger, you can change that to 140% or whatever. If you have a retina display, maybe you want to put that quite high. Now, on this uh, computer though, I think best to set it back to the way it was before. So I'll switch that off. And there we are back to its normal size for this computer. And now another thing you might want to do, again, if you've got lots of screen space, is that you might like to, so you've got the buttons which are sort of all next to each other and I don't leave very much space in between them. And that's so to have a nice uh, small amount of screen space. So all the time I'm kind of counting pixels and you're just making sure that it takes up as little space as possible while at the same time being hopefully reasonably legible and you know easy to use. But if you've got a nice big screen, then you might be that you, 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 you've got lots of space, then you might want to spread them out a bit more. So then you can switch that on and notice what happens to those buttons, for instance. And see how there's a bit of space between all the buttons and around the edges and between in between all the controls there's just a little bit more space for everything but then the downside of that is that again the windows are much larger so again i'll switch that off on this computer and while we're at it then looks let's look at the help font size as well so you go and click on the font and then you might set that to, say, you might want that up at uh, somewhat larger. So say you set that to, say, 14. And then you can click uh, OK. Or you can click Apply if you just want to test it. And then if you think that's about right, then click OK. And so you can use that to make the text rather larger in the Help window. I think that's about it for the general options. So just a reminder about how you get there. Ops and Options General, and then you can you can use that to configure that and various other options. So another thing you might want to configure right away. Now, if I set it back, to, I'll set it to a rather simpler rhythm, easier to see. If you play it now, try and notice. See if you can if you notice uh, the it's a synchronization between the visuals and the sound. So do you notice anything? You might or you might not. So I wonder if you noticed that the sound is a little bit late compared with the bouncing balls. I'll just try that again. 
and the sound is just the the you have the bounce of the bouncing balls and then just a fraction of a second later you get the sound now this is not very obvious with visuals because the uh, if that was if they were both sounds and the sounds you had two sounds that were out by that amount it would be very very obvious an obvious glitch but with it the visuals then it's not nearly so obvious as even such a big discrepancy as there was just there and uh, so mo so most of you might probably just not be bothered by that at all a lot of people maybe not even notice it but if you want to configure it you can go to bounce options now to explain the reason for it the reason is that it's it's being played on just whatever this MacBook Air has got configured for playing MIDI instruments. It's probably QuickTime or something like that. And it's um, there's there's a certain amount of latency built in. So it'll probably depend on your computer. So on a different computer, it might be completely different. But on this one, there's quite a fair bit of latency, I found. But if you have instruments written for musicians, with uh, they they generally do them so that they reduce the latency as much as they possibly can. But for some reason, that this is really quite a high amount of latency for a quick time on this, or whatever it is that it's using. I don't actually know what it's using, but the default for playing MIDI instruments. And it's the same on Windows, interestingly. In fact, on Windows, it's even more for the default, far, far more than you usually get for a musician's instrument. But it's not much of a problem for the bouncing balls because you're not you're not trying to play this thing. You're just uh, you're you're you just got the bouncing balls and hearing the sounds, and so you might be quite happy with that, and you might even prefer to have it delayed like that. And uh, for instance, in, when a conductor is conducting an orchestra, the conductor typically conducts quite a bit ahead of the sound. So if that's what you like, you might even set this delay to be negative. So you could set it to be positive for whatever, and then you have, you have to experiment until you get it exactly in time. Or you can set it to be negative uh, if you want to have an even more delay. Then you can set that to, say, minus 500 milliseconds or whatever. That will put the bouncing balls even, even further ahead of the sound if you make that negative. But let's just switch that off because, you know, generally it's most people, it's okay. So, uh, sometimes if you're wanting to work with some of the exercises again, you might want the bounce very exactly synchronized with the sound, so you can set that there. So, that's the bounce synchronization. Right, so then the other thing I want to talk about for setting up is, well, talk about the skins. So, if you go up there, you have these various skins that you can try, and that's including. There's this is the shades of blue. It's the default, but you have the um, you have black on white, and you have white on black, which are useful if you need high contrast visuals. So black and white, everything's optimized for the bounce, the tempo dial. Everything's optimized for people who need if you need high contrast visuals. And then the other thing is the white on black as well. So that's worth knowing about if you need that. Now, these, these skins are also, they're quite useful for the projects. That's the wood grain skin. And then if you go to skin and enter skins, then you will find many more skins down there that you can use, example skins, and you can make your own. Now these are quite useful actually, these skins, for dis distinguishing different projects from each other. So the thing is that, that when you get used to Bounce Metronome, you might find that you use it in many different ways. So you might set up projects for different ways of using the program. So t sometimes you're using it to practice your swing, sometimes you're using it for some, it's just for playing so, so, so simple rhythms like these, and sometimes polyrhythms, sometimes your drum machine or whatever. So you can save those as projects. So file, save as project, this is how you do it. Now in the wine skin, it will default to inside the wine skin. You can save it there if you want to. In that case, if you move the wine skin around, your project is, stays inside the wine skin. Or you, if you want to save it on your Mac, go up there, right to the top, and it says desktop, my computer, my documents, that my documents is mapped onto your Mac documents folder. 
So if you go there and you click save. And now if I go over here on the Mac and look under documents and there it is. That's my, my project has been saved in, in your documents folder. So now suppose that I want to save another project, then it, I, I might change the skin to say the shades of blue skin. And now I'm going to make a drum machine. Okay. Make a remake drum machine. This is what happens here is that it's, it's just, it's just the blocks display that you normally have for balance metronome, but it's set up so, so that it can be used as very easily as a drum machine. And so you, you, you uh, I won't actually explain how it works, but it's pretty obvious. You set up a number of parts, the number of beats per measure. And so we've got four parts there. And then the first, in the first part, we've set up the, uh, the first beat of each measure. And so you can kind of click and add some instruments onto it. I'm, I'm just clicking it around and we're not doing anything terribly sensible here. And that's your drum machine and you set it running and you should get those notes sounding. And it's just, it's just a typical drum machine thing here. Yeah. I think I've gone and made that one vanish, that's why it's not doing anything. If I click there. Right, it's now visible. So that's your, that's your drum machine. Oh, I could have done it here as well, I'd forgotten. You can hide and show them there as well. So it, so now we've made our drum machine and now we want to save that as a separate project. So file, save as project, and you know, let's call it drum, drum machine. So now, uh, and then when you finished your project, you go to file and when you finish, do close project. Otherwise, you'll you'll keep getting an alert saying uh, saying that you know, do you want to resave the settings? So now, if you want to go back to it, you can go to the floating menu there. So that's our original one with the with that, and this is our and there's our drum machine one, and you can go back to that. And suppose with the drum machine, I forgot to do that, but we go there, make drum machine show drum machine and now I can go win and choose show currently visible windows at the start of session then that then that that means that these windows will be will show every time you start up bounce metronome the ones we have on the screen right now so now let's save that project drum machine so now if I go up here and now if we go to recently, uh, there's the floating menu, but also this might be convenient as well, recently visited files and file types. So we have it set, if it's not set to projects, then click on project there. And and by the way, you see these gray buttons, this just happens from time to time on the Mac. I've spent hours trying to sort that out, I can't figure out why it does it, but uh, it's a very, very minor glitch. So sometimes it sorts itself out, sometimes it doesn't move the mouse over it and it'll sort itself out. So uh, so what you can do is you can go and look here and there's a list of the of the files in the folder or the recently visited files and you can switch between them here as well. So if I go to that new then that's the one with the that was just four four with the wooden with the wood wood grain skin and now if I can go to the drum machine and notice that it'll pop up and it'll show the drum machine put in the right position. So like that with the windows that we wanted to have restored and showing at the beginning of every session for the drum machine. So so that I think is about it for projects. And so I think I'm going to do a separate video about the next part whilst talking I'm going to take you through the various some of the various features in Bounce Metronome because I think I've been talking for a bit, so maybe it's the time to take a break. YouTube video is best very short, I've found.